Animals and plants have a love-hate relationship, a story as old as the history of life on Earth itself. Plants can provide animals with nutrition and medication, but can also make them sick. In their parallel evolution with animals, plants developed strong frontline defenses against attack. Physical deterrents like barbs, prickles and bark make it difficult for animals to eat them. Plants also produce some very effective chemical weapons. Beneath thick bark, toxic compounds like alkaloids and tannins lurk in resin and sap. These poisons are sent to stalks and leaves, areas vulnerable to assault, giving them a bitter taste and discouraging predators. Herbivores encounter this jungle of lethal substances on a daily basis. So why don't they get sick? We journey to the Spice Islands, to Zanzibar off the Tanzanian coast, for an insight into how some animals cope with plant poisoning. Rainforest soils are poor in nutrients, and the trees growing here protect their leaves with high doses of defensive compounds. Indian almond and mango tree leaves form a major part of the Zanzibar red colobus monkey's diet. These leaves are full of protein, but they also contain phenols. In high doses, these chemicals will poison the monkeys. At the very least, they cause indigestion. But the red colobus appears to have found a remedy. They have learned to eat charcoal. They pick up leftovers from charcoal kilns where it's made for cooking fires. They also relish in charcoal from trees and stumps, charred when pastures are burned. This young colobus learns the antidote from his mother by imitating her. Charcoal acts like a sponge, soaking up toxic compounds in the stomach and safely removing them. These monkeys crunch their way daily through several grams of charcoal. The amount they eat compares closely with the recommended dose to treat cases of drug overdose and poisoning in humans. Nobody knows how the Zanzibar red colobus discovered this antidote, which, apart from humans, they share with few other species. If few animals consume charcoal, clay eating is far more common. Red clay on the banks of the Tambopata River in Peru attracts hundreds of Amazons and macaws. They gather here to purge themselves of the unwelcome side effects of eating seeds and unripe fruit. This natural diet is rich in tannic acids and toxic alkaloids like quinine and strychnine. Soil plays the same role as charcoal. It contains minerals which bind to toxins, removing them from the gut. Clay eating, or geophagy, is one of the most common natural prescriptions in the animal world. The practice extends to elephants, giraffes, rhinos, and many other animals, including primates.
Animals actively strive to stay healthy to survive. Many have successful strategies for disease prevention. But what happens when they don't work and an animal falls sick? The tiny island of Cayo Santiago lies just off Puerto Rico in the Caribbean Sea. Rhesus macaque monkeys live here on one of the oldest primate research centers in the world. Macaques are not native to the Caribbean. They were introduced from India for research on Cayo over half a century ago. Although food is provided every day, the monkeys spend much of their time roaming the island foraging for plants. Like other animals living in the wild, they're exposed to disease. The subtropical climate and the macaque's own feeding habits make them particularly vulnerable to intestinal parasites. They get infected by accidentally swallowing worm eggs, which can lie dormant in the soil for up to 10 years. The most common symptom of infection is diarrhea, with the sometimes fatal consequence of dehydration. Nonetheless, this colony of macaques enjoys a high reproductive rate and low mortality. In short, they appear able to cope with parasite infection, even to the point, it seems, of treating its symptoms. The macaques take action to stop the runs. Clay soils contain a mineral called kaolin, which helps prevent fluid loss. The monkeys appear to be using it to counteract diarrhea caused by parasites. The macaques eat so much clay that dozens of clay mines, like this one, have been excavated across the island. Clay may also neutralize toxins in the plants they eat, much like the charcoal eaten by red colobus monkeys on Zanzibar. Macaque's use of it mirrors our own species. Australian Aboriginals, Africans, Chinese and Europeans swallow clay in one form or another to counteract intestinal and digestive problems. If nature is the macaque's pharmacy, it is often ours too.